Okay, then we have this. It's a little bit older, and I know most of you are already aware of it, but if you're not, security firm is to be holding a zombie crisis scenario. So it says, forget the H1N1 pandemic. Could a future crisis arise from an outbreak of viruses that destroy brain cells and render people violently catatonic like zombies? Well, I'm sure they already have it or they're working on it. Um, we've had Russia actually come out and say they have a type weapon that can turn people into zombies. So, so yeah, you have the bullet company, I think Hornby, Hornby uh, making zombie bullets. You have the... Uh, the government, I think it's the CDC actually talking about a zombie apocalypse and all that, but they say it seriously. But they, but they, they use, they make it like into a joke because of the zombies. Uh, but they're ta they're talking about serious situations of like uh, survival and stuff like that. Next month, his outfit will incorporate no kidding zombies into a disaster crisis scenario at the company's annual counterterrorism summit in San Diego, a five-day event providing hands-on training, realistic demonstrations, lectures and classes geared to more than 1,000 military personnel, law enforcement, medical experts, and other government workers. That was based off the CDC's preparedness program. It says here, when they published, uh, talking about a mutated virus that quickly spreads as the government dispatches its military to maintain order while infectious disease specialists scour for a vaccine. And actually, the Navy Times in 2011 uh, put something out called the uh, Zombie War Deployment Guide, examined various tactics and gear that experts consider essential to wage a successful campaign on the undead. And of course we've been seeing, uh, you know, down with the cannibals and stuff like that, and people want to be vampires uh, going on in reality. And this is actually what they call it, excited delirium. So yeah, talk about uh, sudden and seemingly inexplicable deaths of some highly agitated subjects being held in police custody. Most of the cases required uh, to be restrained and capacitate the subject was not sufficient to cause death. They usually said it was associated with drugs, but they reported that they're not related to abused drugs, suggesting further an underlying central nervous system disorder. So one of the symptoms of excited delirium is victims exhibit superhuman strength and are impervious to pain. This is scary, they say. Scientists find a way to erase frightening memories so this is good for uh controlling the masses as well as far as brainwashing and mind control and stuff like that because you want to you want you know passive remember passive consumers uh don't really question anything and stuff like that you want zombies and stuff and you want them to forget all the bad memories and all of the um, victimization that they've had to gone through you know i mean to be able to see things i guess clearly right to see this uh, as i call it the one true reality or um, you can lose your mind, right? Especially when you're not, you're not really around other people that have that perception. So, I mean, you really, you got to keep your wits about you. So, but uh, some people, they may end up uh, losing it, right? It says researchers at uh, this university in Sweden have found that it's possible to interrupt the formation of memories during a crucial stage when they're being cemented in your brain by proteins. In fact, it seems that memories associated with fears can be replaced entirely if caught before this consolidation process can finish. So this has been taught, you know, this has been covered in movies. I think and Clockwork Orange isn't exactly like this, but this is, uh, this is the same area. By displaying a photograph of simultaneously administering a small electric shock, the researchers were able to induce formation of fear memory in test subjects. Then by showing half of the subjects the same photo without the shock repeatedly during the consolidation process, they were able to stop a sense of fear from being permanently associated with the picture. So yeah. It's pretty crazy though. I mean, think if they can do the opposite of it, where they can take away all your good memories and just implant bad ones. See, that's how I think, dude, with all this research, you know. They're not actually looking to make it better, they're looking to make it worse. Like with the research that went on with the imprinting of logos, corporate logos on children. That's probably to make sure that it's working, that it's effective. Pennsylvania High School ban commemorates Russian Revolution. Citizens are outraged from September 26th. Pennsylvania's new Oxford High School marching band served controversy earlier this week after a halftime show that commemorated the Russian Revolution it included olive military-style uniforms and giant hammers and sickles. There was an immediate public outcry against the performance, prompting the superintendent to issue an apology for the display. So it says here the theme was St. Petersburg 1917. An angry parent notified Fox. They went on and they said that uh, it was... Glee meets the Re Russian Revolution. I'm not kidding you. They had giant hammers and sickles, and they were waving them around. 
Who thought this was a good idea? There was no reason for Americans to celebrate the Russian Revolution. I'm sure the millions who died under communism would not see the joy of celebrating the revolution by a school 10 miles from Gettysburg. It says it would be tantamount to celebrating the music of the 1935 Berlin. If I was a Lithuanian, Estonian, or Ukrainian, I'd be a little hot. I'd be really hot. Insulting. It is insulting to glorify something that does not need to be glorified in America. Then the new normal has gay old time mocking Christian conservatives from August 31st. It says we have yet another addition to the pro-gay anti-Christian genre. So popular on TV these days, apparently NBC is looking to cash in on the falsehood that abnormal is the new normal with the series focused on a gay couple's quest to have a child via surrogate mother. So, yeah, it says here that a gay couple committed partnership uh, in the film turned to surrogacy because they can't have a child the traditional way. And it says, um, when did biology become tradition? Ironic how liberals worship the altar of science until science gets in the way of their gratification. That's just tradition. They said the new normal is the brainchild of gay rights activists and wannabe pornographer Ryan Murphy says it wouldn't be complete without portraying a racist and bigoted conservative character. Barkin recently made news when she tweeted that she wished Hurricane Isaac would wash every pro-life, anti-education, anti-woman, xenophobic, gay-bashing, racist SOB right into the ocean. The new normal show, or pilot, did its best to contrast happy and functional gay relationships with broken and dysfunctional traditional marriages. It says here that they were vain and shallow, obsessed with aesthetics. It said Brian decided his relationship was ready to have a child when he saw a baby in the shopping mall, saying it was the cutest thing I've ever seen. I must have it. He exclaimed to David about his monumental decision. He continued by saying, Honey, when I saw this miniature person whose skin was flawless, uh, by the way, I really got it. And it says, remember the Chihuahua accessory craze. So, like, they're accessories, children. A consultant from the surrogate agency told a couple that they could create the perfect embryo and then plant it in a surrogate, just like an easy-bake oven, except the surrogate has no rights to the cupcake. It says, Brian responded, I would like a skinny blonde child who doesn't cry. And lastly, the episode ends on an artificial happy note. Goldie has finally found a family, and Murphy has driven his point home that a family is a family, and love is love, and biology is mere tradition, and up is down. On that note, France may ban words mother and father in legal records. They said parents and nod to gay rights. They're not only poised to make gay marriage legal, it plans to expunge the words mother and father from all legal documents, reports the Telegraph. says the words should be replaced by parents in all instances so that not to discriminate against same-sex couples. A uh, law that will be passed by Holland will also allow gay couples to adopt. Who is to say that heterosexual couples will bring up a child better than a homosexual couple? They will, that they will guarantee the best conditions for the child's development, the justice minister asked the Catholic paper. So, surprisingly to me, it's they say 34% of the respondents in that poll said it was depressing, that story. EU Parliament wants women on the European Central Bank Board. So the European Parliament wants women appointed to the Central Bank Executive Board reports uh, reports Reuters. They say, we noticed that the EU member states' nominations to some of the most important EU institutions result in appallingly monotonous lineup of nominees. Remember this article that I've covered? This is from 7, what, 7 12 of this year? Gay rights is European Union entry criteria, Brussels says. The European Commission has said in a written note that respect for gay rights is a legal criteria for EU accession. Many of you have probably seen this article too. A billionaire uh, basically wanting to pay $64 million, uh, for some dude to come and marry his gay daughter. So, um, you know, there's no need to really go into the, to the details. It's pretty much what it is. She's not bad looking either. Um, but uh, the first thing I thought was, okay, social engineering, right? Um, talking about Edward Bernays and getting people to do things they wouldn't normally do, like talking about women, uh, getting them to smoke, when they, it was socially taboo, and the way they connected it was with freedom. Oh, it's freedom to be doing this. And people caught on to it, and they accepted it. Pretty much uh, like what they're doing uh, with these uh, shows now. So even though it's not the new normal, they've been pushing this. Like I said, you know, at least since the early 80s, they've been pushing this as the new normal. So it wasn't tradition. This is social engineering. And then when, when uh, you know, in the 2050 when uh, young people are looking back or when they become adults, we're like, well, wow, dude, you know, 
you know, we did this. We were a part of something. It's like, no, you weren't, dude. <laughs> Again, engineer consent. You were just a part of social engineering, and you were born into it. And you were somehow uh, engineered mentally to think that it came from the grassroots and that this is how it always was. And that's why I said, you know, you can, it's, it's easy to, you know, to, to kind of just lose it when you, when you see all of this uh, at work. You can see it right in front of your eyes. You can see it in your families, uh, in friends and stuff like that. The engineering just taking hold and ripping things apart, right? Because it happens so fast. But the elites themselves, do they want to do this? No, I think they want to have everything separate for them. So they want everybody else, the masses, to, uh, to be, you know, on the other end, the receiving end of this of this engineering and stuff, social engineering and eugenics. But when it comes to them, oh, no, they want the best of food, the best of water, the best of education. And, um, you know, no, that, that gay stuff, that's, that's, that's for the masses so they don't procreate. We want you to procreate, you know. And then the feminist Russian ban uh, shines in EU despite orgies, blasphemy, and hooliganism. So the EU parliament nominated a controversial punk ban whose members were recently sentenced to two years in prison for inciting religious hatred for a human rights prize, sparking intense condemnation from Russian officials. So remember, I've covered this before about how this ban was kind of a State Department ploy uh, by the West to uh, basically cause dissent and, and, and um, instability in Russia, socially and politically. And they do a good job. And the Russians notice this. They say this initiative cannot be qualified in any other way to except an attempt to intervene in the work of independent branch of authority in Russia and to cast doubts on the court ruling. Also, the nature, goals, and forms of their action have nothing to do with freedom of thought. R remember what the former KGB uh, agent said? He said what? You use social revolution for political control. In other words, exploit their passions and demoralize the, the society. So you can cause what? Uh, destabilization. Then we have feminine activists to sue Ukrainian TV channel over a fake program. So they're suing a TV channel after they did a, um, a story on them that suggested the activists had earned $1,000 per month and that the feminine headquarters are in Paris and that they are funded from abroad. The program featured an investigative journalist who joined the ranks of the feminine and claimed that the bare breasts of the feminists cover up somebody's money and political interests, which the group denies. There's fury at the New York City bowling alley, which makes fun of rape while the city sexual assault rates have climbed. This is the actual thing. Getting jumped in an alley has never been this much fun. A woman has been suspected of killing five newborns because she was afraid her husband would leave. Goes on and says she, she charged with killing five of her newborns, saying that she was afraid her husband, who didn't want any more kids, would leave her. Said uh, the 28-year-old and her husband have two living children, eight and ten. The husband was unaware of the subsequent births. She has admitted to killing two of the infants who were born alive. Says one found in the recycling plant in 2006, the other in a car park in 2007. Three more bodies were found in the woman's cellar. Guy threatens cat and wife shoots him. So that settles it. Goes on and says that uh, this woman chose her cat over her husband in a big way. When a hubby threatened to either shoot the cat or throw it over the fence, this fence right here, the 42-year-old Houston woman allegedly shot him in the stomach with a 40 caliber semi-automatic gun. And because this is based off feminism, right, because feminism is what they're pushing uh, to imbalance the, the way we've done things for a long, long time, not saying oppressing women. It's just there's always been this kind of natural balance between, um, between men and women. And the engineering of society is trying to squash that, basically, right? Just a normal family, a normal society, into this highly um, scientific, uh, scientifically engineered society of mega cities and, and little smart, tiny little apartments hooked up, everything tracked and traced, and you're loving it. So 57% found this story hilarious. And people in the comments says that they, she should be nominated for 2012 Hero of the Year. And move fast here. An LA chef told police he slow cooked his wife's body for days. And I love me so much as a woman marries herself. 36 year old divorcee with two kids. What will the depopulation brainwashers think of next? A burglar punched a heavily pregnant woman 11 times after she found him in her bedroom robbing her. Clinton and company land cheap birth control for the third world to avoid almost 30 million unwanted pregnancies. New York City schools are handing out morning after pill to students. 
teenage girls should be offered implants as birth control over the pill. And a science professor says, kill sperm to save the planet. Eugenicists say babies are a parasitic burden on society. This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.